Okay, so again, today, lots of time just going over word problems. All right, again, please, if you're not sure about something, raise your hand. If you don't understand fractions, all right, it's very difficult. All right, so please, stay with me. All right, it says you have enough paving stones to cover 10 square yards, all right, which is an area, correct? Anytime somebody says squares, you know it's area. All right, and you plan on making a walkway that's 30 inches wide. So let's make a walkway that's 30 inches wide. So what I'm going to do is just so I can see what I'm doing, I'm making a walkway. And this walkway is what? 30 inches wide. So I'm going to put a 30 inches here. Remember? Two marks represent inch, one represents feet. Inside, though, the area is going to be what? Ten. Ten what, though? Ten square yards. Stay with me now. It's ten square yards. So everybody from yesterday should be able to tell me we have a problem. All right, what is the problem right off the bat? Yep, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for this length right here. All right, but what is the actual, I mean, what is... Um, the thing that's causing a problem right off the bat. They're, um, different units of measure. Yes, they're different units of measure. Right now, I have square yards, and over here I'm measuring in what? Inches. So I've got to convert inches to yards. So how many inches in a yard? Well, wait a minute. There's 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, so there would be what? 36 inches. All right? So 30 inches represents what fraction of a yard? 30 over 36. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this out of the way, and I'm going to put this right here is 30 out of 36. All right? Now, just to make sure you understand what I'm saying, we could probably reduce that in our head, but if you want to, do 30 ABC 36 and hit enter, and it will actually reduce the fraction for you. All right? And when I reduce that fraction, it reduced to what? 5, 6. All right? So now, 30 over 36 reduces to 5, 6 of a yard. Five sixths of a yard. Now, if I'm not clear, let me know. Is everybody happy with that so far, right? Yes, sir. All right. Now, I'm trying to find this length right here. Given what? That the area is 10. Given that the area is 10. All right. Now, how do I find the area of a rectangle? Um, by base times height. Yes, base times height or length, length times width, width, right? So over here now, here's what you're going to be able to tell me. You're going to say area equals length times width. Well, what is the area right now? The area. 10, right? 10. Is everybody good? All right. So I'm putting a 10 in for the area. All right. Do we know what the length is? No. No, that's what we're looking for. So you leave it L. What's the width? Nope. It is five sixths. Very good. All right. Now, do you remember how to solve fractions? What did I tell you to do? Multiply by the uh, reciprocal. Very good. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply by six fifths, which will cancel this out. So I got to multiply this by six fifths. So my length of my walkway would be somebody tell me. 12 what? Squares. No, not squares. Because you're measuring the length. 12, yes, yards. Very good. 12 yards. Very nice. All right. So 12 yards long, 5 sixths of a yard wide, and that would be a nice sidewalk. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Um, I want you to do 6 fifths times 10. Well, you can do 10 over 1 if you want, but it's not necessary. Just do 6 fifths times 10. You good with that? 
right? Six, A, B, C, five times ten. There you go. All right. Again, listen. You might have some problem with the calculator until you become good at it. All right. That's what I'm saying. If you don't get the right answer, I like Sebastian. He's just asking me a question because he knows how to do it, but he just messed up on the calculator. All right. So please use your calculator. You're getting the experience right now. So when you take the test, it's not a problem. All right? All right, that's good. Now, let's look at the question B. It says, suppose instead that you want a walkway to be six and two-thirds yards. All right? Now, I, 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 what they're trying to do is they're trying to say this. Look, let's make it, bless you, this length. I'm making another walkway. But this time, I want this to be six and two-thirds yards long. Sixteen and two-thirds yards. The question is, how wide am I going to make it? Now, keep in mind, it's the same area. Do you agree? So what area do we have? Ten square yards. Is everybody with me on this? So it's kind of the same principle, right? All right. What equation do we write? Do you want to give it a shot? Yes. Area equals length times width. All right. Now I want you to tell me what's the area. Uh, the area. Now think carefully, please. What's the area? Well, look. Look at the problem. What is the area of that rectangle? Uh, Come on. Yes, 10, right? You with me? That's what, listen, here's how you identify area, for those of you guys who are not quite sure. Area is the one that's squares. You measure area with squares. You hear me on this now? Right? So now, before you say something, think. All right? So you're going to replace A with 10. Now, do we know the length of that rectangle? Julian, we're going to ask Julian, what's the length of the rectangle? Don't look at me. Look up at the board. Yes, the length is 16 and 2 thirds. So 16 and 2 thirds, and we're trying to find the what? Here's the formula for assuming this area equals length times width. The area was what? The length is, so we're trying to find, there you go. You with me? Now, can I really multiply by the reciprocal right now? No, because 16 and 2 thirds is not correct. All right? So what we can do, instead of multiplying by the reciprocal, we can just do what? Divide. Everybody with me on that? So now, practice this on your calculator. So your answer is, I'm going to write it down for you. I'm not going to write the answer, but you're going to say the width is 10 divided by 16 and 2 thirds. That's another way to do it. And we ended up with the width being what? 3 fifths of a yard. 3 fifths of a yard. Okay, now that was kind of tricky, so you have to be careful, right? You have to be real careful. All right, you don't do the reciprocal of 16 and 2 thirds. All right, you, if you want to do the reciprocal, you would have to change 16 and 2 thirds to an improper fraction first. Yes, and that would be 50 over 3. So it would be 10 is equal to 50 over 3 times W. And if you multiply by the reciprocal, you get the same answer. Yes, sir, Colin. Um, how did we get 10 yards squared? Well, they told us that in the problem. Did they? I think oh, so. Oh, yeah, they did. You see that, right? Yeah, I see it. Okay, good. Now, again, listen, we're practicing right now. So you're supposed to say, hey, I'm not sure, or you understand everything, then I'm in good shape. But if you want me to tell you something or explain something, let me know. Everybody's happy, right? It's not, it's not that hard. What makes it hard is thinking about the fractions, correct? 
right? But because we're using the calculator, right, the calculator will do the work. Your objective right now is to understand and get better at the word problem. All right? So now let's go to the next word problem. It says use the table to find the cost of buying the amount of fabric. The price per yard is given in the table. All right? So you need to purchase three and a quarter yards of brown fabric. All right? So how much is it for the brown fabric? Five dollars. All right? So Caroline, how do I find the cost? What would I do? Yay, very good, very good. All right, I'm happy. So here we have three and one fourth times five. And what'd you come up with? I'm waiting for her. 16 and one fourth. Now, generally when we're dealing with money, do we say 16 and one fourth? We would just say, let Caroline tell me. So 16 and one fourth, it would be better if we just said it's gonna cost me how much? And there you go, $16.25. Because we're dealing with money, usually we do decimals. All right? So now um, what I want to do is I want everybody now, because we know how to do 9, I'm not going to waste my time, but I want everybody to do 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. I'm just going to walk around the room. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I want everybody to do that real quick. Now, again, remember, I don't just want the answer. I want you to write down, for example, number 10, just to make sure. Everybody's going to write down on their paper what? 2 and 1 half times 8. And then you write down the dollar. All right, you write down the dollar amount. Yep. We're doing all the way to 14 right now. All the way to 14. Come on, chop, chop. All right, Vivian, how much did you get for um, yellow fabric? What was that? Number 10. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep, $20. All right. Ellis, what about you, number 11? And what'd you get? Thirty-two twenty-five. Is everybody agreeing with me? Yeah. All right. And number twelve. Um, go ahead, Julie. Which is seventy-five dollars and twenty-five cents. Perfect. All right. Avery, why don't you tell me about number thirteen? $15.25. 
it's the same process, right? Which is? 141 dollars. Does everybody else agree? Yes. All right, Abby, what about 14? Exactly. All right, is everybody happy with that? 14? Is 14 correct? What? Yeah, double check that. Double check that. She's double checking it. What? 30 what? 3840. Let her just see what her mistake was. 3840? You sure now? I don't want you to. $38.40. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, uh, again, I, I think that's a good thing to know. When you're going to the store, you're buying a certain amount. All right. Everybody has to know. All right. You have the price that you have and how many you want. You just multiply them together. All right. Now, the one that usually causes a little problem is this. All right. You have $50 in your pocket. And you need all the blue fabric you can possibly get. How can I figure out how many yards can I buy? Sebastian, how many yards can I buy? Well, what I have to do? Why three and one fourth? Because that's how much a female is No, 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 no. I mean, you're right, but that's not exactly how you should say it. Why did I do 50 divided by 3 and 1 fourth? So what am I dividing by now? Because we need what? Blue, right? And blue is? So why am I dividing? What? Sebastian, what are we? You have $50. And you want to buy all the blue, so what? how do I do this again? Why are you saying five and something? Am I just not seeing it right? How much does the blue fabric cost? You see what I'm saying? You have $50. So how many yards can you buy? Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what you were saying. Does that make sense, guys? Everybody with me? You would just do 50 divided by 6. All right? Now, in this particular problem, we're going to get a fraction. So I want to make sure, um, I want to show you how you can convert it to a fraction on your calculator, too. What is 50 divided by 6, by the way? 8.3 repeated, right? Which we already know 0.3 repeated is what? Fraction. Which reduces to? One third, right? Is everybody good on that? Mm -hmm. So everybody should be able to tell me that's eight and one third yards. That's how much I could buy. Now look, does everybody know there's this button on the calculator? Look up on the on the screen so I can tell you. That's the button F D. What does that mean? Fraction to decimal or what? Decimal to fraction. So so if you have that 8.3 repeated, I'm trying now, I know we know what it is, but I'm trying to show you how you can use your calculator. You can hit second and then hit that button, and doesn't it change it to 8 and 1 third? Oh, oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's right Wait, what button is it? You got, I look, now, I don't, I, I don't have time to come around and look at everybody's calculator now. I don't have it. Uh, it, it's on there, Sebastian. You have to find oh, fraction to decimal. F to D. I said hit the second button or the shift button. Oh. Come on, Sebastian. Mine. Oh. I, I don't want to walk around now. All right. Does everybody know now how to convert fraction to decimal, right? Yeah. Now, let's say we want to convert it back to a decimal. I want you to hit second and hit that button again. And now, guess what happens? It converted it back to a what? Decimal. 
You with me on this, right? Now, I need to make sure everybody in here knows how to convert from a fraction to a decimal or a decimal to a fraction. Is everybody good on this? All right. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to do this. I want you to take your, uh, your calculator, and I want you to learn how to make it an improper fraction. So to make it an improper fraction, I need you to hit shift and then hit the ABC button, ABCD button. There you go. And it'll Amen. convert it over to an improper fraction. Does everybody see that? Hit enter then once you do that. So this button right here, listen to me. This where it says A, B, C, that's the mixed fraction. And then above that, I think is the, is it D over C? D over C, which is showing you that that's now a what? Improper fraction. All right? So you have to be able to do that. So here, hit second. Did you do that? Hit the second button, and then hit the ABC button. Now it's converted. Now you want it to a decimal. Second, hit this button. Wow, second again. Isn't that cool, guys, right? So, so your calculator can do everything. It can convert fractions to decimals, decimals to fractions. We like it. it can do improper fractions to mixed fractions, mixed fractions to improper. What? No, you have to have a, like, let's say 2.5. Right? So we got second, fraction to decimal. No. I'm trying to get that to a decimal. Right? I'm trying to get you a fraction. So you go second. And there's a fraction of that. Now hit second. So hit that. So hit enter. So we're trying to get to the improper fraction. Nice, right? So we can do everything fractions to decimals, decimals to fractions, mixed to improper, and so on. All right, that's important. That's very good, good information to know. All right, so now let's talk about 16. A mirror is 13 and a half inches wide and 21 and a quarter inches long. What's the area of the mirror? So how do you find the area? Um, 13 and 1 half times 21 You're awesome. Perfect. I want everybody to write that down. 13 and 1 half times 21 and 1 fourth. And then she's giving me the answer. 286 and 7 eighths. The only thing that's going to be a problem is you have to do inches squared. Because we're doing area, we want to do inches squared. Is everybody happy with that? So far, so good? All right. Now, number 17. A deer mouse is 7 and 1 quarter inches long, including its tail. If the tail is half its body length, how long is the tail? So what am I doing on this? Exactly, right? Because it's half. The tail is half. Seven and one-fourth divided by two. And what did that come out? Hold on, let me help. What was it? Three and five-eighths. Three and five eighths inches. Well, let's take a look. Seven and one fourth. Type it on your calculator. Seven ABC one ABC one ABC four divided by two. There you go. Three and five eighths. You happy? Everybody's pretty happy. All right. Let's continue on. A recipe for sourdough rye bread calls for three quarters cups of rye and one and two thirds cups of flour. How many cups of flour will you need all together? So you have rye flour and bread flour. So all together, Colin, what do I have to do to solve this? You don't have to together. You don't have to multiply. What are you thinking? You so you have this right here. Look, in this pot, we have three fourths flour. In this container over here. We have one and two thirds cups. So we add them? Yes, there you go. We add them together. Thank you. All right, so you're going to add them together. All right, so now everybody's going to write down on their paper three fourths plus one and two thirds 
And Colin, what did you get? I'm going to let you add that. You can tell me what the answer is. Two and five twelve cups. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. So far, so good. All right, Max, you're up. Nineteen. It says a piece of lumber that was cut to be one and a half inches thick shrinks down to one and nine thirty second inches after losing its moisture and drying out. What's the difference in the thicknesses? Uh, right. So we're not subtracting. Uh, All right, do that on your calculator and tell me what you got. Seven over what? Seven over 32. Now, the only thing I want you to make sure is one, seven over 32 inches. Make sure you write the units down. Make sure you write the units. All right? Okay, Julia, you're up. Yep, a rectangle has a perimeter of 23 and a half centimeters. The two shorter sides measure five and two thirds. What is the length of the two longer sides? Now again, this one's pretty hard. It's simple if you draw it out though. So I want everybody to draw their rectangle. All right, everybody's gotta draw their rectangle. I think seeing and visualizing it is very important. So I'm gonna draw my rectangle. All right, which is what I want you to do. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put perimeter is 23 and 1 half. Now, it says the two shorter sides are 5 and 2 thirds. So I need you to look at your rectangle and put in 5 and 2 thirds. 5 and 2 thirds goes there, and 5 and 2 thirds goes there. Your objective is to find this length, Julia. So tell me what the game plan is. What do you think we're gonna do? Good job, girl. Add five and two thirds. So she said right off the bat, we're gonna take five and two thirds plus five and two thirds. Instead of doing five and two thirds plus five and two thirds, Julia, what else could you do? Instead of adding them twice, you could. Shh. Yes, that's correct. So you got two options there. So tell me what your answer is. I'm listening. 11 and 1 third. Exactly. All right, so now what's the next game plan? What do we do? Yay, girl. Good job. So the next thing she did was she said 23 and 1 half minus 11 and 1 third. Tell me where we're at, kiddo. Just a minute, let her finish. 12 and 1 sixth. One final step. Do you know what the last step is? Okay, watch this. You do. I bet you do. Watch. So 12 and 1 sixth, I want everybody to do this. 12 and 1 sixth represents that length, that total length. So what do I have to do? Did it ring a bell? No, 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 no. I'm trying to find, now listen to me. What I want to do now is I want to try to, I want you to visualize this. So I'm going to copy this right here. Oh, that was bad. All right, that's okay though. Can do this. Um, I got to do this so you can see what I'm talking about. Copy that. Paste. Okay, that's that side. Do you agree? Now watch this. That's the other side. Would you agree? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. That length is 12 and 1 sixth. Come on now, kiddo. What do you think I have to do? <laughs> Don't help her. Now remember, I'm only looking for this right here. 
Yay, good, exactly. Does that make sense, right? Because you subtracted out the five and two thirds, correct? And your the other two sides are exactly the same. So you would have to take 12 and 1 6, then say it one more time. What would I do with the 12 and 1 6? Yes. Divide it by 2. Beautiful. That's exactly correct. And the answer is? So this right here is 6 and 1 12. Now that one put a star by. That one's very hard for most kids. All right, that's very hard for most kids. But now listen, does everybody understand? To find the perimeter is just the distance around. Does everybody agree? Yes. Yeah. And that the opposite sides are always the same. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, go ahead. Why do you have to divide by two? Well, because when we did 23 and one half, stay with me, minus 11 and one third. Why was it 11 and one third? Because that's the That's correct. That was this length right here. That was this length right here plus this length right here. So if I subtracted that 12 and 1 sixth was the this side <laughs> plus this side. But I only need oh. one side. So I have to do what? Divide by 2. You happy with that? Oh. Makes sense, right, guys? Yes, That's sir. very good. Very tricky. All right, very tricky. All right. Jesse, you're up, kiddo. Okay. So let's do number 21. It says you're cutting fabric for placemats that are be 13 and 3 quarter inches wide. If you have a piece of fabric that is 82 and a half inches long, how many placemats can you cut? So it would be divide. Yay, girl. Tell me what to do. So you would do uh, 82 and a half divided by 13. Wow, I'm very happy with you, girl. That was very, very good. All right? So very smart. So do that on your calculator. But again, remember now, you guys, you're having to write down the, the, the 82. Does everybody, I, I don't want just the answer now. All right, so when you divided, what did you get? I got six. Exactly six? Wow, so you can make exactly six placemats. You good with that? Now, what happens, let's say the answer wasn't six, but let's say the answer was 6.25. How many placemats could I make? Jesse? How many placemats? If the answer came out to be 6.25, how many placemats could I make? So, so would it be fair if, if everybody got a placemat and you got a half? No. So you can only make how many? Six. You can only make six, right? Even if even if the answer was 6.9, you can still only make what? Six. Because you don't have enough. All right. So again, keep that in mind. I think I put that on the test where it ended up being a decimal. You can't do, does everybody agree you can't do a quarter of a placemat? Yeah. Everybody good with that? No. All right. So if, like, the, so if we got 6.25, we would put 6. You would have to put 6. Okay. All right, you would have to put 6. But this one, it kind of worked out perfectly, so the answer was 6. Okay. This one are, uh, exactly right. Exactly. All right. Here we go, Connor. You're up. All right. Let's see what you got. It says the largest and smallest sea stars on record measure 37 and 4 fifth inches and 7 tenths of an inch. So you have the very biggest and you have the very smallest. How many times larger is the largest one? Wow. Very smart. Does anybody understand why people miss this one? Because they automatically just what? So multiply them together, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, again, listen to me. This is the one that a lot of kids miss. If you're trying to find out how many times something is, what do you have to do to do numbers? Divide, Divide them. Does everybody happy with that explanation? Yeah. Right? So here we go, Connor. You said, and everybody's writing this down, 37 and 4 fifths divided by 7 tenths. And what did that come out to be, Connor? Exactly 54? Yes. Oh, all right. Wow. So we would say 54 times larger. Oh, not inches. Right? No, definitely not inches. All right? Definitely not inches. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. All right. Number 23. It says, you are given $35 to buy 
to buy blue fabric to help make costumes. The fabric costs $6 per yard. Do you have enough money to buy four and seven eighths yards of blue fabric? What could I do? You have to tell me what to do, not just tell me a number. What do I have to do? Uh, you have to, um... There's oh, two so ways of doing it. Alright, um, so, uh, you divide 35 by 6. Yay, good job, buddy. Very good, very good. So here we go. He says, I'm going to do 35 divided by 6, and tell me what that is. Um, it's, uh, 500. Um, What's on the calculator? Now change it back to a fraction. Oh, that's right. Alright, it's five uh, uh, it's five and five six. Five and five six. So do you have enough to buy four and seven eighths yards? Yes. Yes. Good job, buddy. That was good. Alright? Yes. Because you have enough money to buy five and five six. Right? You only need four and seven eighths. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, 24. Will, can you tell me what to do on 24? Uh huh. So, what would I do? Right, now you have to tell me the units also. Go ahead, multiply that together for me. Seventeen and three fifths. What though? No. Yes, because we're talking about what? We're talking about area. You measure area with squares. You measure area with squares. All right. I'm pretty happy with you guys. All right. Hold on now for a second. Um. Now I want to jump. To, everybody, jump to twenty-eight for me. Well, what does that actually mean there? What does that mean? What do you... Yes, that's exactly what that means. So this means three fourths divided by eight thirds. So you just type that in the calculator. All right, I just want to give you a heads up on that to see if you knew that. Uh oh. Now I want to go to 36. I want everybody to take a look at 36. Now, I'm going to show you now how you can do this on your calculator, right? This is just plugging it straight in on the calculator, guys. Have been hearing me? Yeah. So, 436, it would be 2 and 4 fifths times 5 sevenths plus 5 and 1 fourth. Now, listen to me. You must write that down on your paper. You must write that down. And then you use your calculator. All right. Now everybody's got to type it in on the calculator. All right. And what do I get? Is that right? Seven and one fourth. Good. Now I want everybody to look at thirty-seven. You have parentheses on your calculator. I want you to use the parentheses. Is everybody with me on that? Right. Now I'm trying to see if I'm going to give you too much homework. No, I'm not. All right, so your job tonight is to finish up all 40 problems. Is everybody good with that? It's not that bad. Now, the other thing is, now I want to show you on this right here. These problems right here, hold on. Listen to me. These problems right here, there's not really a lot that you have to do. Does everybody agree with that? You can just type that in. Right, is everybody with me on this? All right, but the word problems, I want you to try. On 37 through 40, that's just typing them on the calculator. So everybody with me on this? All right, so you got some homework. If you don't have a calculator, it's going to be kind of tough. All right, make sure you grab one. Make sure you get one. Everybody else, put uh, the bell's going to ring so you can put the calculators up.